Well, it's time for part four. This one will be made up entirely of viewer suggestions. So there are a couple of surprising inclusions. With that being said, let's just get into it. Located deep in the heart of Texas is the lesser known AT&T Stadium, Jones AT&T Stadium, home to the Texas Tech Raiders. It's a double-tiered bowl stadium with one end open that offers views of the campus. Perhaps the most remarkable feature of the stadium is the Spanish Renaissance inspired facade, which looks fantastic. And it makes sense, Lubbock is not that far from the Mexico border. You know, the new Mexico, not the old one. Their scoreboard looks pretty cool as well. Rice Eccles Stadium, home to the Utah Utes. The original Rice Stadium was built back in 1927 and was mostly demolished in 1997. Incredibly, the rebuild was finished under a year later and the Utes didn't even miss a season at the stadium. It then hosted the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2002 Winter Olympics, which was the main reason the new stadium was built. From your seat, you get an excellent view of the mountains, which, you know, isn't necessarily important, but if your team is getting pummeled, at least you can just sit back and enjoy the view. California Memorial Stadium, home to the California Golden Bears. Despite what it would seem, Strawberry Canyon, although picturesque, was actually a pretty faulty location for this stadium. By that, I mean it was built directly on top of the Hayward Fault. But it's not their fault. It's the fault of Mother Nature. But you can't fault them for the stadium design. Although fairly simple on the surface, it's actually built in two halves to help prevent damage from earthquakes. One side is built into the hill, and the other side has a magnificent Colosseum-inspired facade. Keenan Memorial Stadium, home to the North Carolina Tar Heels. It's known for being one of the most beautiful stadiums in college football, and I'd have to agree, especially since they added those Carolina blue seats, combined with the plentiful use of brick throughout, makes for a stadium that's very easy on the eye. There's also plenty of trees surrounding the stadium, which gives the illusion of a more intimate atmosphere. I can definitely see why people suggested this one. Mishi Stadium, home to the Army Black Knights. Well, there are plenty of stadiums that are located by a river, but there aren't that many situated right next to a reservoir. Not really a big difference, just pointing it out. But it is a very picturesque location. And while the stadium might look quite a simple design at first, it actually has quite a few medieval inspired design features, which are a nod to the nearby campus, which is built in a neo-Gothic style and looks incredible. TD ECU Stadium, home to the Houston Cougars. It's a relatively new stadium built on the site of the old Robertson Stadium, and it certainly looks new as well. There's no faux classical aesthetic going on here. That silver and red metal facade in particular looks excellent, and it's functional as well. It blocks the sun, but still allows airflow. And what looks even better is the view of Houston's skyline that you get from your seats. I can't believe we waited until part four to include this one. Laval Edwards Stadium, home to the BYU Ah, also the Cougars. Two Cougars. Ha, <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Just like Rice Eccles Stadium, this one has an excellent view of some beautiful mountains. I guess Utah has more moons and more mountains. The stadium itself is a little bare bones. Something slightly unusual about it is that the stadium is made up of four individual stands rather than a bowl structure. Nothing wrong with that though, and who even cares about the stadium when you have a view like that? Yale Bowl, home to the Yale Bulldogs. 
This crater-like stadium has quite a storied history, as you'd expect given that it's over 100 years old. There probably wouldn't be a Super Bowl without the Yale Bowl. Well, there would, but it would probably just be called the final or something, because bowl games started with the Rose Bowl, which was in turn inspired by the Yale Bowl. Who knows, if it wasn't for the Yale Bowl, maybe they would have made like a plate-shaped stadium or a cup. So maybe it would have been called the Super Cup. Actually, you know what, that sounds all right, but I swear it's a brand of ramen noodles or something. Bill Snyder Family Stadium, home to the Kansas State Wildcats. While surprisingly, it's not named after a wealthy donor, but a former coach and his family instead. Isn't that nice? This U-shaped stadium with its mix of bench seating and individual purple seats looks pretty nice. And don't be surprised if you run into Harold and Kumar, because the exterior looks like a white castle and I have heard that they are very interested in that style of architecture. Now, I don't think anyone actually suggested this one, but the last stadium reminded me of Ryan Field. The mix of bench seating and individual purple seats, the white castle-like exterior, and they're also called the Wildcats. That, that can't be a coincidence, can it? I mean, what are the ch- uh, actually, you know what? This one actually has more of a beige exterior. All right, nothing to see here. Kyle Field, home to the Texas A&M Aggies. As you can see, the stadium has certainly seen better days. This is why you don't text and drive, kids. Especially when driving a bulldozer. I mean, there are dozens of them. Dozers, wrecking balls and cranes all happen to be there, clearly on their phones while driving, and they caused all this damage. Such a shame. It was almost as if it was a coordinated effort. Nonsense aside, these shots were clearly taken during the stadium's most recent renovation. Kyle Field is the biggest stadium in Texas, and that is saying something. It looks like a great stadium, and one that must be a huge advantage for the Aggies. High-rise stands on all sides of the field, full of people cheering you on. The opposite is true for the away team, obviously. And there you have it, another 10 amazing college football stadiums. Are there enough amazing stadiums for a part 5? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.